Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being the show where I talk about TV shows of the supernatural, fantasy, and or science fictional genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about Gion Sion Creature, Season 1, Episode 3. Great episode, a lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Well, first and foremost, let's start off with the uh, underground facility in, in, in some of its intricacies. I don't know if intricacies would be the right word, but we're picking up in the aftermath of the last episode. The creature kind of got free and slaughtered a few people in the process. Um, there was like three guards, a major was severely injured, and some of the, um, I forgot what the, the team, it's the, pl the uh, platoon that I think oversees the creature and kind of was supposed to keep it docile with the nitrogen and stuff. But either way, most of them got killed. I feel so bad for that last guy because the Major's like, all right, close the elevator door after the creature ended up getting out. Because as they were put into the elevator, someone accidentally knocked the nitrogen off. And then one person was like, Major, I just noticed there's no spores. And as we learned last episode, the spores is a representation of a defense mechanism of the creature. So the moment it stop doing that that means like oh it only does that when it's sleep so if there's no spores it's away but before they could realize it they were all well one person got impaled the others tried shooting this thing but this thing's pretty resilient and then kind of acts a little bit like a vampire because it seems like specifically it doesn't seem like it fully has a natural healing property like healing factor it seems like by feeding off of people once again we still don't know what it's feeding off of but maybe it's well no it definitely seems like blood because there was blood on the ground and it seemed like it was absorbing it but it's kind of evolving and getting stronger the more people it eats but yeah it was able to like heal its bullet wounds like even pushing the bullets out and healing the wounds the more it's consumed people but like I said, I felt bad for that guy because the major was like, yo, close the door. He's like, I don't want to because he's like, if I make any noise, that thing's going to know we're still here and come back. But the major was like, you do it or I'm going to kill you. So forcing his hand, it's like, yeah, like you don't want to move. You want to stay in your comfy position. And it's just like, okay, so he's, the the guy tries to close the door and gets grabbed by the creature. He's like, help me, Major, help me. And the guy's just like pistol whipping his hand and then him in the face trying to get him to let go. It's like, yeah, he's your sacrificial lamb. You still got impaled in the end anyway. But I wonder, is that also why, like, I mean, not only did you survive, there's a little shame because you kind of threw someone else to the wolves. You were kind of cowardly, you know, so... I know that's got to sting a little bit. Your your wounds are both a physical men, uh, are obviously a physical manifestation of obviously what you went through, but it's also kind of maybe a reminder of like you're not quote unquote being a coward in that situation. I'd be a coward too. I'm not trying to be like, oh, I'd be so brave and tough. I'm just like, yeah, like it's going to mess with you a lot because it's like you, you did kind of throw one of your people to the wolves. You know, you were the commanding officer in that situation and uh, it should have been about self-sacrifice. I mean, hell, if you both worked together, you probably could have gotten that uh, door to that elevator closed faster. I mean, you managed to survive, but you're heavily wounded and you got to live with the shame of what you did. But I mean, there's no shame when surviving, I guess. I, I don't know. I'm, like I said, I'm. it sucks that you threw that guy under the bus. I'm surprised you didn't have the decency to be like, hey, at least let me kill you so you're not alive. We don't know how this thing responds to dead. This might be like a, if you've interviewed with a vampire, they don't drink dead, uh, uh, they don't drink dead men's blood because it's poisonous to them, I think, or just at least make, taste it terrible or makes them sick, I think. But either way, um, so maybe this creature's the same way. Like the thing kind of definitely gives me a little vampire, vampirish vibes, which is the blood sucking. But I mean, that could just be monsters in general. Because it doesn't seem like it necessarily eats the bodies; it just drains the blood from them. So it definitely leans vampiric. But I should also know. I kept wondering if there were only going to be one creature. It's like, well, the, there's. It's in the title. It's Gion Siong creature, not creatures. So this thing is going to be the only thing the entire series. It's one monster. Granted, they've made others, but they've all been destroyed when they've had to destroy previous facilities. Because we saw the facility that they had at the beginning of episode one, but that definitely wasn't their first operation. They've probably moved around quite a bit. I mean, maybe that was the first one, but I, I don't remember if that's the same area that um uh, she okay and her dad were talking about because they were like oh they've experienced this in maturia i think it's the place the same we'll, we'll get to that later but definitely not that might not have been the first facility or maybe that was the maturia place but it, they've definitely been all over the place with this operation you know but like i said we'll kind of get into that 
more in a bit, but... But that soldier was pleading with uh, Colonel um, Kato to, like, destroy this thing. He's like, it's a calamity. Because he was like, so tell me, how was, was it fast? Was it beautiful? It's like, Jesus, dude, you were so psychotic. But once again, it's just the the pride he has of, we created something amazing. And it is what's like what I thought it was. It is purely, like, as I figured it much, it makes the most sense. It is a weapon. It's supposed to turn the tides of the war for them. Because, once again, World War Two is still happening because the atomic bomb still hasn't been dropped. Okay, so I looked it up because I brought this up previously and didn't know the date off my top of my head, but it was like August 6th, I believe, of uh, 1945, which is obviously August is around the same time Korea got from underneath the occupation of Japan. So I'm assuming that gave them the potential leeway they needed because like Japan was kind of devastated at that time. So maybe that gave them the push they needed to kind of like get Japan out of Korea. Once again, I don't know the intricacies of it. It might not, that might have been the first steps. It might not. The way I was reading it made it seem like it was kind of over and done. I'm sure there was like ramifications of the aftermath. Of it. But once again, we're dealing. We're in March right now. Still March. It should still potentially be March. So that's still a couple months away. So uh, they are, but they are getting bombed right now, and so they need something. Uh, I wonder if it's almost supposed to be a little bit of because like. Well, God, Godzilla was basically a ramification, and Godzilla as, as a concept is supposed to be representative of the atomic bombs that hit Japan. That was kind of like J Japan's metaphor for what happened. So I wonder, is this almost supposed to be kind of a, I mean, I'm sure this is supposed to be like a supernatural metaphor in the same regards of what Korea had to go through because of the Japanese occupation. Like, you're just, like, it's kind of spending, like, a science fictional slash supernatural, like, horror element to it, but I think it's kind of supposed to be of the same principle to some extent. Um, <clears throat> but, yeah, they need a weapon to kind of, like, lead the war. What I thought was so interesting, the, the doctor that hired uh, Sachimoto, I guess he wasn't aware, I guess he handles things more so upstairs, so he was completely unaware, not that he was unaware what was going on downstairs, but he had no idea they had already successfully made another monster, because he saw Sachimoto's drawings, and he was like, wait, this is what, oh, so I guess, like, I'm, I'm guess, I guess Colonel Kato was keeping a lot of this hush-hush, because -hush this was kind of his secret project, now we're kind of getting to that point where I'm like, I still don't know of Kato supposed to be the Victor Frankenstein parallel, or is it supposed to be this scientist? Because Kato, like, they're supposed to, like, present this creature of, like, oh, yeah, it'll be our weapon, but it's like, Kato's like, yeah, but it's not tameable. But the doctor's like, yeah, but we tamed. Look at what we were able to do uh, to uh, Joseon, which I, I just put a comment on the first episode because it just went up at the time of me recording this. But I, my, my understand, I thought Joseon was a name for like a specific region in like South Korea or something like that. I didn't realize it's specifically a South Korean word slash name to represent all of Korea, specifically a unified Korea. Because at this point, I don't think there is a North or South any like region wise there technically is, but like they're not delineated like they are present day. So they aren't separated away. So it's just Korea as a whole. They do call it like, like, what was it like Joseonging, but that might have just been referring to the, the people. But I was wondering if like there is a because it's a different word in North Korea for it versus South Korea. So they do have two different words uh, representing like because it's because uh, Joseon also represented like a an era in Korea, like a, a dynasty era known as it was named after someone. But let's get the tangents and all that aside. Well, it's not a tangent, but it's relevant because I just wanted to make that correction. Like I said, I, I brought it up as a comment i left it as a comment in the uh re my review of the first episode but i just also want to include it in this as well but we do see later on that that um i mean that's also the that's sad thing getting back to that conversation of the doctor being like oh taming the people it's like once again showing how some japanese i don't i don't want to say all japanese but considering the time frame a good chunk of japanese people viewed Korea is like, yeah, we had to tame them like they were pets. Um, I mean, I guess that's the greater context of, once again, that's why these people are being used as the experiment. And it's like, you know, Korea is nothing more than a petri dish to these people in, in, in this extent. So, but either way, um, 
he is training uh, the creature like an animal. And it's like, right, I'm ringing this bell. And every time I ring it, this creature knows that I'm feeding it. So until it eventually obeys and listens to me. And I mean, the creature is cognizant enough to some extent. But that's the folly of man. Always believing you can control something. Especially with Kato. Because he's got that look. He looks annoyed. Like, okay, this is my thing that you're taking away from me. This is my... <clears throat> my goddess my everything i'm the one to put in the work not you this was supposed to be my thing i guess that's why he kept it secret because they didn't want anyone trying to take it from him rip control over it so he seems annoyed so i could i feel like kato's gonna put that doctor in a position where he ends up getting killed or something or uses him as further means of controlling the creature i don't know Just like that annoyed look on his face makes me think we'll we'll definitely see more on that front. So, since we're going, I'm staying in a hospital area. We pick up with um, we pick up with uh, Shao K, and she's with a guy, um, a soldier in particular. And so when the janitor guy and her father show up, they explain who he is. He's he's from Korea. He's not Japanese. He was recruited. And he's been a part of this. Like, this isn't his first time at a facility. He's been with them enough to see what they do. But he doesn't know. Like, he's still ignorant to... He's one of those soldiers that's ignorant to everything going on. Because he's like, what happened to those people that died at this hospital was the same thing that's happened before in the village. He's like, I saw it. Like, he just refers to it as anthrax. So, it's like, right. There's a lot of soldiers that are unaware. Only those who are in the know. just Because he's part of the platoon that deals with, like like that stuff like the ones who would wear that like hazmat suits and stuff he's part of that unit but a lot of them are kept in the dark probably only some of them are like probably maybe some of the more higher up or very spe uh, special specific units are aware of what this is really all about all he knows is like this is anthrax they're thinking like they're weaponizing and experimenting on people trying to weaponize it it's like no it's a byproduct of the creatures they created so but he, it turns out he's the medical student, the mom that came in selling her sewing machine, trying to uh, get uh, golden treasure to look for her son. This is him because he was wounded in battle in China and he ended up getting uh, shipped here and just they ended up making him stay here and operate here. But um, he he actually ran into Myung uh, and he tried to tell her, like, hey, stay where you are. Because this is anthrax, it will kill you, so don't touch the spores or anything. And she's like, please uh, let um, Ishikawa know Myungji. And he was like, she was like, I, I mean, Akiko. Which I'm wondering, like... Because I was about to say, he's like, no, he knows she's Korean because he, he called her Myungji. So I'm like, what's the Akio? Aki I mean, maybe that is actually her, like, surname. But I'm like, that seems like a Japanese surname. So I wonder, do they come up with a fake name for her? Just for the sake of hiding the fact that no one would... Even though everyone, I guess they he doesn't want anyone Japanese to know what's going on. I don't. Maybe I'm com completely misinterpreting that situation. But her name is like Akiko. But maybe maybe that is actually just her surname. But it sounds like a Japanese surname, not a Korean one. But once again, that could just be ignorance on my part. Because she was like Myung J. No, 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 Akiko. Like made the, that correction and that delineation. I don't. I don't see the significance behind that. Maybe it's like that way. Like I said, maybe she is hiding the fact that she's Korean and maybe it's just meant to be like, well, if you look at my name, you'll just think I'm Japanese. Maybe maybe that's what that's supposed to be about. But he tried to warn her and because he went outside and threw up because of all the bodies because he was helping dispose of the bodies and piled them up outside, he would he had the ever-living shit beat out of him for throwing up because the commanding officer was like, oh, you're pathetic. You're throwing, like, you f basically it's like, how dare you vomit around me? You're filthy vomit because it's like you're less than i don't want your disgusting vomit around me you disgusting creature you know once again how they view um the joseons and the korean people and obviously with everything going on he ended up throwing up on the guy and the guy proceeded to beat the crap out of him even more kicking him on his own and um chaoke so all of this the guy trying to get away from all this ended up trying to kill himself but she's the one that saved him it's like right you can die another time your death could be more helpful in other regards so you know wait till then to kill yourself if that's gonna what you're doing but she was trying to give him reason to live and especially if he could be helpful but he does have to return to his duties because it's like right if you don't they're gonna it's gonna blow up our whole operation 
if you, we get found out. So he has to return to service. And it's like, right, I'll, and uh, Che okay, it's like, we'll, I'll, we'll try and get all of us out of here. And he's like, please don't forget me. Which is like, you know, you know that guy's dead. He doesn't die this episode, but you're like, he's super dead. He's not going to make it out of this, sadly. Like, she's not going to be able to keep that promise to him. But uh, focusing on Che okay and her dad, it turns out that they... are familiar with this because they've come across like a similar facility to lay out and stuff is similar to what was it Machuria or the area they had set up one uh, an operation and it's like right they I don't think they know at the heart of it all that it is once again I think only a few people know really really what's going on with them making monsters but they're like right what they did to people beforehand we've got to do something because They've come across this before, but they weren't able to do anything. We just did what we did to find mom, and that's about it. But, like, we we can do, we should, we need to do something different this time that it could actually help people out. It's kind of her perspective. So, they're supposed to be waiting for a signal from Zhang. Uh, because that's about, you know, the message they got last episode from the uh, nurse from the hospital. But, either way. Shifting gears a little bit with Jane, because I'm going to like tie Jane's story along with um, Cha, um, Cheoke's circumstances too. But for now, let's switch, shift over to Jane, who's dealing with meeting with uh, Maida and just the callousness in which she says the stuff that she does. It's like, oh, it's nice to see you. And she immediately knows, like, he's like, yeah, I need to find someone in a hospital. She's like, is this about me, Young Jay? It's like, yeah, just kind of give up on that. You'll never find her. And, you know, I mean, I mean, are you really going to be that worried about my husband's threats? It's like, yes, if these were any other normal circumstances, I'd, I'd, I'd deal with it. But I think your husband's serious. But she's like, no, nah, you just have to find another way. Myung Jae is kind of beyond you. There's no getting to her now. It's like, you just have to find another way to deal with my husband. Like, like the callousness in which she says that. It's like, your decision to do this kind of threw a, a wrench in my life, and it's going to cost me everything, but she doesn't care. Because, once again, I believe this is simply about... Not less she knows what's going on, because maybe she does. I don't know. Because it's like, once again, specifically sending her to that hospital, may, you could have easily had her killed somewhere. Like, I'm sure you 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 are the wife of a high enough ranking military officer that something could happen. I don't know. It just, for her to specifically send her to that hospital, that was a back and forth I had last episode of just, does she know what's going on underground? And maybe Ishikawa has no idea, but maybe she does. Maybe she's more in the know. Because... Well, we, we're, we're focusing on who he is as a ranking officer, but we don't know her background. Maybe she comes from a family that's tied to this. Maybe she comes from a military family that's aware of this. Maybe she might even be funding some of this operation. I don't know. I'd assume it's government funded, but I mean, maybe it's not. Maybe it's maybe very specifically funded by someone. Like maybe that's her connection in all of this. Because you would think if you want to get rid of Myung Jade, like there would be easier ways to do it. Like I said, that's why I was like, I wasn't sure if you were just trying to have her have the baby out of sight and you just had no idea what's going on at the hospital or you knew exactly what was going on. And Because they also need, as we see later on, there are like babies in jars and stuff. So I can't, I, th I think it's probably a good thing they don't know Myung-Jae is, uh, Myung is uh, pregnant because they'd probably kind of take even more notice of her. Granted, I mean, there's only... A few survivors now because most of the subjects died last episode so but maybe that's why she was specifically sent but then you would think she would make it known that she was pro I, I just don't know where Meta's like her full motivation I'm just guessing at this point is still unclear but this conversation with her was enough for Jing to know like well she definitely is there because um uh, Gap Young was trying to be like, right, how do we know that uh, Che Ok wasn't lying about Myung Jae being there? But it's like, nope, Mid like confirmed it. So I need the blueprints to this hospital and so we can try and get in. Because that's what I was talking about last episode where like, okay, Che Ok and her dad are stuck inside um, the hospital and he was trying to get in. So I didn't think he'd find out about uh, Sachimoto, but he does because the lady at the bar ended up hitting him up. Because, like, you know, he put fillers out, plus she also knows, like, right, Cheo K's dad was looking for the same guy, so. 
Which I love his whole operation of like, right, because he knows Ishikawa's people are watching, so he's meeting up with different people. He meets up with Wang, who's going to be the one selling him the fireworks. He ends up going to a tailor. Who, I mean, these are his connects and stuff, but he's doing it out in the open. I love how suave it was. Like, okay, we're playing uh, Mahjong, and it's like, yeah, in the back of the money was a note saying fireworks, and then at the tailor's, he got the picture that pointed to Sachimoto. So the lady at the bar is like, right, I'm having dinner with him. I wonder, was that just kind of a flirtation thing? And you knew that you were going to be, because she had already set that up before she even talked to Jang. So I guess it wasn't just like, either it was like a genuine thing or she knew Jang was reaching out. I mean, because it is, like I said, I think June TX place. So there is that connect regardless. So maybe that's her justification for helping him out even before you know, maybe she just legitimately thought was Sachimoto was interesting, but it feels like it was probably purposeful setting up the whole dinner plan situation to begin with. But sadly, uh, Zhang ended up missing the meeting because he ended up unfortunately running into the douchebag uh, with the sword and his gang from last episode. It's like the ones who are causing ch uh, trouble at Golden Treasure. It's like end up running into them and he's starting shit now. And it's like, right, they're beating him up. And the driver that drove uh, Zhang there, which I love Zhang, gave him the money. He checked out the bills. He's like, okay, no note calling me an idiot this time. So you're not trying to fully get away from me. But like his, uh, one of the people he works with, the, the driver we know his name is Mori. He, uh, a, 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 I guess one of the other people he works with for Ishikawa ended up coming in there and be like, oh, here's some food. And it's like, yeah, but Jang's over there getting beaten up shit. It's like, no, we're hired to observe, not interfere. Uh, he'll be fine, whatever. And it's just, and you can tell the driver Mori like actually did feel kind of bad. It's like, yeah, but you know, he kind of had, I think a little bit more of a soft heart. I mean, to be fair, Jang has kind of probably, who knows if he's treated you better than Ishikawa, but he's kind of thrown you for a loop. Once again, taking you for a ride, using that metaphor again. But yeah, Jang had to... Deal with those guys. And the guy's like, I'll, I'll let you go, but you're going to have to handle the golden treasure. Which, for Zhang, it's like, no, I'm not going to do that. And it ends up in a tussle. Which, once again, he's not as well-trained of a fighter as Cheo K is. But because he grew up from the start from the bottom, now we're here type of situation. I think it has led him to know how to scrap, how to do what it takes to survive. So, he's handling his own against a group of people that, that should be admired but he's still getting sliced up a little bit and finally he ends up an officer stops by he's like okay help me this guys are brandishing swords around do something help me i did nothing wrong to them but the officer let them do it. he's like just don't make too much of a noise and go easy on them and for jang it's just kind of a representation of that's the sad because i think on some level jang thought it is the thing of money makes the world go around and thought at least money would give you power and status which it did you know, it, it, he thought it would, you know, make up for like, right, my life sucked because I had no money and power and position, but I do now. I have a name. I have a reputation. I am somebody. I have money, but it meant nothing because at the end of the day, it's just like, oh, you're a person from Joseon. That's all it is. Like, and that's seen as less than nothing. And the sword, the main guy is like, see, you thought like all you are is trash with money and that's all you'll ever be. And that pissed JC on, I mean, that, uh, that pissed Jong off because he's, he grabs the guy's sword and kicks him in the face. And it's like, I'm already pissed off enough. Like the fact is, yes, that is what I am. And I'm already pissed off enough because it is, I don't know if I'd even go as far as saying it's denial but it's just, his reality is he's accepted Joseon as it is. And it's just kind of like, I've accepted it. I've tried to make a life for myself built in these parameters of what this life is. What is independence? That's not ever going to be happening. I'm not going to be loft. I'm not going to be have lofty dreams of what like this country would be like outside of Japanese rule. Like he doesn't even want to open, entertain the beliefs. And so, but it's just that stark reality. What like even the barrier you've built around yourself, the the arm of money and recognition, all that came crumbling down in this moment because it's like, it's always been there. It's just, he's kind of put up this suit of armor to make it seem like everything was okay. And just in this moment, it all came crashing down. And so he tries to make his way to the uh, restaurant, but he already missed it. I was like, damn. And it's like, he's on the timetable because he was supposed to meet at eight, supposed to set off the uh, fireworks by like 10. 
So by the time he gets back to the Golden Treasure, because um, obviously Gabe Young it has is not okay with this plan because it's like we're rushing him off to his death. But Noel is like, no, no, it's okay. We, he's the one that gives the orders. But the mother in her kind of came out when she saw how banged up he was. So it's like, all right, let's get you to the hospital. He's like, no, did you get the blueprints? Um, Mr. Goo, go get the blueprints. And she's like, Jang, stop. Because she's like, you are hurt. You were wounded. Is Myung Jae even worth all of this? And he's like, at the end of the day, you're right. I don't care about her. But they're trying to take away the little bit I have. This is everything I have. It's like they've already taken, and she even says, like, they've already taken our country. that like, yes, they have. So I'm not going to give them that. This is a little bit of me I'm able to hold on in this shit storm that is our lives because of them. I'm not going to have them take that from me because what hurts more than these sword wounds it's my pride and jay uh june uh Tiak is overhearing all of this and i think he initially wanted nothing to do it because once again he doesn't believe that they can any bid like any fight for independence won't amount to anything it's kind of his perspective on it so he isn't really willing to kind of go all out but i think this in the end will push him to be that person because it's like right because they were even saying, like, oh, let's go to authorities. It's like, well, he already knows the authorities ain't going to do jack shit. Like, the person will probably get slapped on the wrist. Like, nothing will happen for him. Now, also, the guy's going to come back with a vengeance. He's going to be an issue later on. There's no way he's just going to let this slide. He's definitely going to come after um, Zhang later on. You would think that he'd be able to kind of call in Ishikawa, but it's like Ishikawa's people are just sitting on the sideline. Ishikawa's not going to do anything. I mean, they're not fearful of repercussions for Ishikawa because Ishikawa doesn't care about you. You're mean to an end to find Myungje, and it's like outside of that, I don't care what happens to you as long as you do what you're supposed to do because you're going to lose it all. To Like I said, he might even just decide to take it all regardless, even if you do manage to find Myungje. I feel like that will probably end up being the middle finger that Zhang will walk away facing um, when this is all said and done. We'll have to wait and see. But obviously, the lady ends up showing up with Sachimoto. I guess she convinced him to go see Zhang because I guess for him, all the horrors he's seen, it's like, right, I have to get someone to help. Or maybe she, I don't know what was told. Maybe uh, June Taeyuk talked to him and let him know. Because he came there to the Golden Treasure and like, hey, I got to tell him something. So I guess she came on her own. Like maybe they were already all together. Um, she was waiting outside, but then she came inside because maybe June Taeyuk was taking too long. So, or maybe because he showed up first and then Zhang showed up wounded and maybe that in, in, initiated her like coming inside. I don't know, but she shows up with um, Sachimoto and. Both him and Jun Tiek were able to sneak inside. Him is kind of... They have a very specific name for it. They even said in the episode, but the, the person who pulls the carriage. And um, Jun uh, Tiek was like hidden amongst some of the items. Like he was in a a, a box or, or chest or whatever. So they snuck in. At the same time, this is all going down. Uh, che Yoke had decided that they couldn't wait around forever. They needed to take this opportunity to move who knew if the signal was going to come so they moved ahead of time so she snuck inside to try and do something trying to find myung jay but as she snuck inside she ended up finding a family that was locked up and she ended up freeing them and got them out i want i doubt this she's she, obviously she's very skilled in a fight so this isn't the first time she's probably ever had to kill anyone but she kills that scientist and you're kind of like good everyone at this place generally speaking it's kind of a piece of shit. So, obviously, I wonder is uh, the medical student, is he the only Korean that was forced to be here? I wonder is anyone else here Korean? You'd think he'd have some, like, if if there was someone, he might be the only person. Because if he wasn't, you'd, he'd find some camaraderie amongst anyone else. That's why he's bonding with the prisoners, because they're, 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 they are the same, we are the, we have the same people. So... He was forced to kind of do like a hit because he, uh, it was his punishment for uh, being gone for like hours on end like he was. So he was forced to kind of like, like hold a certain position as like punishment, whereas everyone else got to sleep. But the moment the fireworks went off later on, he kind of eased up because I guess he saw that as like, right, the, the signal he heard about. So it was kind of like, all right, things are in motion now. He wasn't quite sure where things stood, but. 
because everything was off kilter because the fireworks went off so late and because of that they ended up showing up late and the storage room was empty but Jang found an arrow pointing up being like right we're going we went to the roof so that situation could have gone bad because Jang sh- I mean uh, uh Cheok ends up showing up with the family and she's knocking up tell her dad to like open up and that drawed some because so- soldiers decided they stole some booze and they decided to kind of uh, celebrate on the roof so but the fireworks acted as a distraction that let them both do their thing. And ultimately, uh, Zhang shows up to kill the last guy before he could hurt JLK. And you see this look on her face. It's almost like that moment when they first met. Well, kind of f- two moments. The moment last episode as well as the moment of episode one where Tom kind of froze. Like as he was walking and she's almost looking. Like I don't think she was expecting him to come inside himself. Like, yeah, you send people, you signal people for it but you she never expected him to kind of be directly involved and i think that kind of changed her mind about him just a little bit and he's like yeah sorry i'm late but it's like did you find me and it's like no found this family and it's it is also the reality of wait who are these kids it's like yeah they were here too so everything that is going on here um because he's still unaware of everything that's going on here because i well sakimoto knows some of the horrors that's going on here but like um chio and her dad are the only ones who know like the true truth of everything well and even they don't know everything but in that moment it's like you get this family out of here and i will go back to find me on jay it's like he came in here because yes it was about his future but he was also concerned about her that's why he's going so far above and beyond but he also probably doesn't want to leave her again so he'll probably try and get uh june um Taek to do that because you know he's part of the independence of this how this is all going to play out is going to be interesting to see where the next episode takes us with all of this but uh they're all there so once again sneaking in it's a little easier because obviously um i'm going to butcher his name it's like B uh Bimeo, I think it's his name. I, I could be, I'm, I'm forgetting what it is. That, but the young kid that works at Golden Treasure, he's like, oh, they succeeded. But Noir is like, no, we don't know that for yet. But I hope they did. Once again, getting in, it, it was already complicated enough. But getting out, especially with a whole bunch of people like that, it's gonna be even more complicated too. So. Obviously, the fireworks have drawn the attention. I'm sure Wang and Gap Young are going to be out of there in time because it has drawn Ishikawa's attention and he ends up leaving. Like, him and his wife just look at each other and he just leaves. So, there's just, I think, nothing but spite in that relationship now. And all she does is look at the fireworks. I think she probably pieces together this has something to do with Jang. It's like, oh, I guess you found another way. It's like, and she's like, how beautiful. It's like, once again, there's like something off about that lady. There's just the callousness in her eyes and her expression so i don't know i'm I'm really interested to see where the next episode takes us going forward with all of this but really that's all i wanted to talk about so the next time we meet be happy be safe live life to the fullest and enjoy it good day and good bye